Good afternoon and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. Today we are joined by Matt Crane, CEO at Sonitor, Sonitor Technologies. Webinar Wednesday would like to thank our sponsor, Sonitor. Sonitor is the leading developer and provider of unique ultrasound technology that locates people and items in real time with the most reliable, high definition accuracy within complex indoor environments. Its mission is to deliver the most accurate and reliable indoor positioning technology to improve the quality of life. For more information, please visit sonitor.com. Just a quick reminder to save the date for our Spring MD Expo. Uh, we're headed to the Woodlands Waterway Marriott Hotel and Convention Center in Houston, Texas, uh, next April from the 11th to the 13th. So please join us for three days of education, networking, and the latest advances in medical technology products and services. For more details, please visit mdexposhow.com. Okay, today's webinar is eligible for one CE credit from the ACI. You can obtain your CE certificate by completing the post-webinar survey, which will be emailed one hour after the completion of today's webinar. You must complete the survey to receive your one CE credit, and you'll be able to download the certificate directly from your computer once the survey is submitted. If you have any questions, you can reach us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. We'll wrap up today's presentation with a live Q&A, so please submit your questions anytime using the questions feature on the webinar dashboard. Let's kick off today's webinar by giving away one of our brand new Webinar Wednesday t-shirts to the attendee that can tell me the answer to the following trivia question. Today's sponsor, Sonitor, is headquartered in Connecticut. Which famous, showman, famous circus showman, politician, and businessman was born in Connecticut? Answer now using the questions feature on your dashboard and I'll reveal the end answer at the end of the webinar. As I mentioned earlier, our presenter today is Matt Crane and he will be discussing RTLS is a transformative tool for addressing nursing and biomedical staff shortages. Matt, you may begin, begin whenever you're ready. Thank you, Linda. And thank you everyone for joining today, whether it's morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. I'm excited to share some insights regarding RTLS with you and hope that these insights lead you towards a pathway and a journey if your organization isn't already on one related to using RTLS as an enabling technology in these challenging times in healthcare. With that, I'll start the presentation and um, look forward to your feedback and questions at the end. Uh, first, uh, I am relatively new to, uh, to Sonator. I joined about 90 days ago. My background um, is in healthcare technology for the last 25 years, working with both small and large publicly traded companies, primarily focused on clinical and operational applications and medical devices, including nurse call systems, asset management programs, medical devices such as hospital beds, infusion pumps, um, vital signs monitors, et cetera. So I feel like I have a relatively good grasp on the environment that you and your, your peers and counterparts in healthcare work in every day. And I've been to hundreds of hospitals over my career to observe workflows and the potential for how RTLS can enhance those workflows. The agenda for today, I'll take you through and then we'll get right into the topic. First, we're gonna review the current labor challenges. Um, those are probably well known to most of you, but I've done some additional research and, and really it's, it's a convergence of issues related to both labor shortages across all types of skill sets and role types and the challenges of the aging population and the capacity to handle those individuals going forward. Second, we'll talk about how can RTLS improve the effectiveness of limited labor. If you assume the limited labor models that the American Hospital Association, Mercer, McKinsey, and virtually every other consulting organization and an industry organization um, has concluded, there needs to be other ways to improve effectiveness of labor. Um, you're not gonna be able to locate and add the talent you need in a timely fashion and likely not retain it as long as you would like. So tools like RTLS, provide a potential opportunity to improve the effectiveness 
of the labor that you do have so that they can focus on primary duties that are more value add, such as the patient um, improvement in workflows, improvement in capital spending, et cetera. We'll talk a little bit about how to get started or continue with RTLS. Um, a, a stat I'll reference later is roughly 25% of US hospitals today utilize RTLS for one or more applications, um, but very few have, in, have an enterprise plan that takes full advantage of RTLS, and we'll talk about that today. If you're in one of those organizations that does not yet have RTLS, um, we've got some advice and counsel on how you should proceed to build a business case and start to deploy RTLS as part of a larger strategy to impact your labor challenges. I've, uh, I've made up some ABCs, very simple, straightforward for RTLS planning. I think they really help individuals who may be new to the concept of real-time locating. Um, there's a lot of technologies out there today, but don't get confused by the technologies. Focus more on your objectives and the goals. So we'll talk about that. And then what are those first steps? What do you need to do to get going? Um, whether it's with Sonator or one of our one of the other many suppliers of, of technology out there today, um, the first critical thing is to just take that first step and get going with RTLS, and we'll talk some about that. So let's get into the labor shortages. The first is this quote that came out of US News and World Reports, and while the pandemic did exasperate many of the challenges related to labor, um, it was well known before by most clinical and operational leaders that there was a shortage of skilled labor and it's going to only um, continue to extend in the coming months and years within our industry, not just in the US, but throughout the world. The AHA estimates that we're approximately 1.1 million nurses short today across all care continuums. I'm sure that wherever you are in the US or around the world, your organization faces some of these challenges related to uh, nurses. They're the largest labor pool in the in the healthcare field, and um, they're the ones that have taken a fair brunt of the entire pandemic challenge. And and the and the they are faced with the decision whether to stay or leave, um, and many are leaving the practice. Mercer Healthcare, one of the leading healthcare analytics firms, has also had. Uh, done work in this space and it the shortage goes across all types of skill sets um, it, from home health aides to nursing assistants to medical and lab technologists and technicians clinical engineering central supply etc and then nurse practitioners so in this world of of times where there is a labor shortage there also is an anticipated significant growth not doubling but near doubling of people over the age of 65 in the United States. So what we see here is a, a convergence, a convergence of an increasing demand curve and a declining skilled labor pool. Um, and what I think is going to occur is no different than what's had to occur in other industries that are under labor pressures and under cost pressures at the same time. I think they will have to look to automation to help remove non-value added tasks that are critical to the workflows of the organization, but with some work can be solved through things other than human beings. And we'll talk about some of those use cases today so that you can apply them as you're starting to look inward into your organization and decide whether or not RTLS integrated into one of your enterprise applications is a useful tool in helping take some of the work uh, burden off of your key resources, your labor, and help them be more effective in their jobs, which hopefully means they're going to be retained for a longer period of time at your organization. Last year is just a picture of an article that came out this year from the president of the American Hospital Association. Uh, as I said, we don't need to talk a lot about this slide. It is well known in the industry, and it's, it's something that is not going away um, anytime soon. Next, so how can RTLS improve labor effectiveness? The most important question I want you to ask yourself, and when you're thinking about RTLS, it really comes down to two things. 
the location of people and assets. So those people can be staff, they can be patients, they can be family members, and then they can be the assets, the devices the, that, that help support that workflow. Um, and what is their proximity to other people and assets? So I think we've all seen this in our own personal lives. We've seen the ability to use applications such as Waze where we're now interacting with other drivers to get notifications about accidents ahead, um, roadblocks, um, police, whatever your, your interest is. That same principle applies to healthcare. The challenge is healthcare's workflows are far more complex. So there are a lot more steps in most of these workflows, whether it's a clinical workflow uh, supporting a patient, an operational workflow supporting an asset, um, or both in the convergence of a patient care environment that needs to be addressed because there are steps in there that can be easily automated through the power of knowing the location of people and assets, when they arrive, when they're there, when they leave, what else was around them at that time. And we'll talk about some of those applications here in a minute so we can bring them to life. And towards the end, we'll talk about an actual hospital that's done significant work in, with RTLS across multiple enterprise applications to leverage their investment in RTLS to impact the quality of the work environment and the quality of care that they offer to their patients and, and their employees. The next step when you think about labor effectiveness, set the objective when you're thinking about RTLS, that it will help decrease the amount of labor required to initiate and or document many repetitive clinical and operational tasks in the workflows. So whether it's a electronic medical record workflow or a nurse call workflow or a patient flow capacity management workflow or a housekeeping um, task or a asset management service task, each of those has the opportunity to decrease the amount of work you put on that individual employee to achieve those tasks because many times those tasks and those workflows are driven by the status or notice of someone or something being in a physical space. We'll talk about some of those use cases here in a little while. The second part that I wanna emphasize is there's a tremendous benefit to RTLS beyond labor effectiveness, meaning it helps your employees do the value added tasks that really improve the patient experience, the coworkers experience, and their satisfaction with their job. But it also is used in high order today for staff and patient safety and experiences. We have all seen too many stories on the news about violence against hospital staff. And one of the things that RTLS can enable along with improving all of these workflows is the ability to immediately call for assistance or help if you're a staff or patient. And depending on your use case for how you use that locating can give location down to 12 inches. So very precise locating, very quick locating responsiveness and the ability to connect staff members when there is a situation that needs to be addressed in the workplace. Tools of the future to help address the labor challenge. Um, there are a lot of folks looking in this space. Uh, I, I jokingly bring up this picture. Um, if you do not recognize it, that is the robot that Elon Musk is hoping to launch in the next two to five years, um, maybe even sooner at around a price point of 20 to $30,000. It does do some basic environments, but I, I talk about robots only because they've been talked about in healthcare as a way to augment labor um, in the future. The, the challenge I see is understanding the workflows that you deal with and that your coworkers and peers in whatever clinical or operational role they may be in are highly complex. And so to intermingle first generation, second generation automation such as this is not the same as the way automation occurred in say the automotive industry 
when they automated manufacturing with, with robots. They did not need humanoids like this. And that's what healthcare is all about. It's about delivering human care um, to, the, to, to every patient that you can. And every nurse I've ever met here, she has always been focused on improving the patient experience. So I don't think the world is ready yet, and I don't think the industry or the technology is enabled yet. And so I don't think you're going to have the opportunity in the next five to 10 years to significantly use things like robots to reduce um, the challenges of labor shortages. So in that case, what do we do? What do we focus on if it's not this type of solution? That in non-healthcare fields, again, manufacturing, robots have played a significant role because the work streams are fairly straightforward compared to healthcare. So our view is we want to help you unlock the hidden labor effectiveness potential in your organization by adding RTLS to many things. So when you think about RTLS, you probably don't think of it this way yet, but you should. It is likely to become as common indoors, indoor positioning is one way to describe it, in the future as GPS is to outdoor, especially in these workflow intensive areas like healthcare. Um, and all of those applications that your hospital, clinic, health system has invested in has a need for RTLS that can use RTLS to impact workflows for the benefit of the employees, to reduce the non-value add documentation of date and time stamping of work activities and let them focus more time on the patient or the workflow process or the turning over and repairing of a, of a critical medical device or even locating a critical medical device that a uh, bladder scanner is always one I hear from hospital staff that is hard to find and is always needed. Um, and nurses and, and even clinical engineers struggle to find all their bladder scanners. So when we think about all the different types of consuming applications, I'm gonna walk you through the ones I've seen in my career over the last 25 years take advantage of RTLS. The first is EHR workflows. Um, from anything from the simple concept of single sign-on, where you present with an RTLS badge as a staff individual, you use some other type of secondary authentication, and the EHR can pull up the, the record for that patient in that room that you're addressing for whatever reason, saving both the staff time and ensuring accuracy is pulled up because it's tied to the patient. There are numerous other workflows. We're working with a number of EMR companies um, at Sonator and a large concept or a big idea concept is the whole concept of virtual nursing. How can you multiply the knowledge and talent of a nurse and use things like locating to help drive that in the future? Nurse call systems, they're a code requirement. They have to be in every room. You cannot open a hospital room in the United States without a nurse call system. Those nurse call systems often tie to staff safety, patient safety, to rounding and response times. There are many ways that nurse call systems can help improve the patient experience, keep caregivers safe, and reduce the amount of documentation and, and, and work that hospital staff have to do to educate the family, educate the member how attentive the staff was during that patient's time in the hospital, how responsive they were, that they completed their rounding checks and they completed their um, personal you know, assessments of each patient. Staff safety initiatives. We talked about this earlier with, with staff safety. You know, the, the, I had the opportunity this past weekend to talk with an ICU nurse at a well-known regional health system. And the only way that they address staff safety yet today is by having a panic button at the nurse's desk uh, or nursing desk in the central, central area. Whereas today, most hospital staff could actually have that on their person through a locating RTLS locating badge. More importantly, depending on the type of badge you are wearing, that can give security or other staff members um, your location down to 12 inches. 
um, or it could be down to three feet, or it could be down to 30 feet, depending again on the type of locating technology you're using and the use case you need it for. Patient safety and experience. Um, so integrations to technology such as get well network so that when a hospital staff member walks in, the patient is immediately alerted to knowing who that is and what their role is within their care path. Um, patient safety also is the ability for the patient to press a button on their own wrist band tag um, so that they can call for immediate assistance, say if they've fallen and they can't reach the, the switch, the, the, the pull cord in the room tied to the nurse call system. Clinical engineering systems, many times what we see and in, in, in hear is that the listing of the assets in the clinical engineering systems, the HMMS systems, do not necessarily reflect the actual inventory of equipment or the location of that equipment because hospital equipment moves around so much. So getting accurate inventories to say we have 100 infusion pumps and you actually see and verify without having to walk the floors that you have 100 infusion pumps still in the, in the building is a dramatic way to confirm that you're working on the right devices, the right fleets, they've not wandered off, they've not been sent to another facility, or if they have been sent to another one of your sister facilities, they traveled with them with the patient, that it does come back to the organization or the entity that actually paid for it. Capacity management and patient flow systems, um, these are a significant part of the um, growing um, bolt-ons to either electronic health records or freestanding organizations like a teletracking, uh, Zulu Fly, Vizia. There's many organizations out there that do capacity management and patient flow systems today. The one interesting thing, and, and this is where I give counsel to, to our clients, is my experience from capacity management and patient flow goes back 15 years. And um, my knowledge of it when I ran one of those companies was very much that during a patient's four and a half to five day length of stay, we could see in our system that we were working with at that time, anywhere between 200 and 400 interactions and events tied to that single four and a half day patient stay. So we were watching all of these tasks, all of these key steps in their care pathway and notifying of delays in the bottlenecks. Well, a lot of those delays relate to location and proximity, whether it's people or assets. And so I think when you think about the future of RTLS and how it can tie to something such as capacity management and patient flow systems, probably one of the most profound areas where it can take work off of all types of roles in the hospital, whether you work in central supply or EVS, or you work in clinical engineering or biomed, nurse assistants, nurse practitioners, physicians, et cetera. They all want to know location of patient. They all want to know the various hundreds of steps that a patient goes through during their care pathway and the amount of time they were delayed or waited and key steps in those areas. Asset management systems, I'm very passionate about asset management. Hospitals um, are large enterprises, millions of square feet. Assets get lost all the time. And so the ability to help both clinical engineering or biomed if they're responsible for asset management or supply chain if they are, or IT if it's all housed under IT. The critical thing here is that hospitals need to be able to use their assets more efficiently. They need to turn them over faster. Asset management actually offers one of the fastest and most reliable ways to create a return on investment. And there's various aspects and views of asset management from a location perspective. There's the, generally, I just wanna know that I have the inventory in-house that can be achieved by a Wi-Fi or BLE locating solution. And then there's this concept of, I wanna get down to one to three meters, but if it's a multi-floor facility, you can bleed through the floor and ceiling. That again is a Wi-Fi and BLE solution, not as accurate. And then you have those organizations that say, I want room level accuracy. I want my staff to know where every infusion pump is so that if they're seeking that, that device, they know where it is and they can go grab it, whether it's an infusion pump, an SCD pump, 
a EKG, portable EKG, a bladder scanner, as I mentioned earlier. Asset management offers tremendous return on investment when thinking about uh, and, um, funding an RTLS initiative that then can be connected to so many other applications like I've covered so far. Strategic planning and capital cycle management. These are related to when you need to buy or upgrade a medical device fleet um, or any technology in the hospital. A, a, quick, a quick note is that for the typical 200 bed hospital, for every one bed you have, you have between 25 and 35 other medical assets in your clinical engineering systems. So when you think about the thousands of devices that are used to serve your patients, and those devices on average cost $11,000 if you're not including imaging, but if you're including imaging, it's more like $15,000 an asset. Putting a tag on it so that you know that you still have it, and then if you're using asset management systems to help drive utilization, you can plan much better for replacement of assets going forward because you know their location, you know their proximity, you can observe over time how much they've been in care environments versus clean, dirty rooms versus in repair versus in safety stock ready to, to go to the next use. So those are critical items that help feed operational efficiency. And I've observed both environments in my career, a completely manual process, which involves a lot of human beings walking around the hospital every day trying to support the clinical needs of their patient population. And I've observed very efficient ones where it can almost be self-run. You don't need hardly any uh, human interaction except when the assets need to be moved up or down the floors for cleaning, um, deep cleaning or for um, repair or their, their PM, the preventative maintenance. Hand hygiene is one that has been around for about a decade um, and is seeing a resurgence as everybody on the phone can imagine or on the webinar can imagine because of the pandemic and the need to monitor compliance of ensuring that we're not transferring infection, doorknob to doorknob, food tray to food tray, medical device to medical device. Most hospitals operate some type of manual process today, but we're seeing, an, especially at Sonator, we're seeing an increased demand for quotes and proposals related to passive monitoring of hand hygiene, which means when a staff member presents him or herself to the soap or um, cleaning solution dispenser and it actually actuates, it records that they actually used that device. And then you can see the compliance on any number of visibility or other type of applications and you can help monitor and improve it uh, and improve performance of a nursing unit or of an entire hospital related to hand hygiene compliance. Temperature monitoring relates to the actual, um, when you think about your refrigerators, um, one hospital we're working with, 305 beds has over 700 potential items they're gonna need temperature monitoring on. There's just a significant need to record that, uh, that temperature of the refrigeration device, whether it be for blood or specialty um, pharmaceuticals or for just the ones that are in the, the, the staff stations and staff lounges. Lastly, indoor wayfinding. One of the benefits of good RTLS systems is you can bolt on indoor wayfinding, which depending on the size of your campus can be a significant value add to the patient and family experience when they're coming in for a physician visit for a procedure or unexpectedly through the ER. Uh, so we're finding more and more requests for how can we leverage our RTLS system in partnering with other applications to build out wayfinding solutions that help guide our customers through the, through the building, through the campus, through the entire organization. So tips on how to start or expand your organization's RTLS journey. And, and I refer to this as a journey because I think it's critical that we understand that you don't put RTLS in and turn it on overnight. Um, it does impact workflows and hopefully positively impacts your labor effectiveness that they can do more high quality work um, and cover 
more ground on their day than they did previously without feeling exhausted. That's really the goal. It's not to put more work on your labor. It's to make them more effective in what they do and more focused on the value add items. So it's a journey, especially if you think through the 10 or so enterprise applications that I talked about in the last slide and addressed, you don't deploy all those at once. And when you look through the filter of what I described earlier, of if you're sitting back in a strategy session at your hospital and you're thinking, how can proximity and location impact this challenging workflow or that challenging workflow, you can find many ways to use RTLS, not just today, but in the future. So a couple of key questions you need to ask yourself first is, do you have an RTLS supplier today? There are lots of them out there. Um, it's a fast growing market. Most industry um, analysts say that RTLS and healthcare in the US is gonna grow somewhere around 25% year over year for the next four years. Part of that is related obviously to pent up demand due to not being able to deploy these systems during the pandemic, but also part of it is the growing um, need to use RTLS to offset other things such as labor challenges or to improve staff and patient safety. What's even more important here is that even if you do have an RTLS system, more likely than not, you don't think about it as how do I use it across a stack of solutions. So I would really encourage thinking, never limiting your thinking of how can location and proximity of people or assets help improve a workflow, help take away non-value added steps. If you do have RTLS, is it enterprise wide? So does it cover all the corners? We were recently doing a quote for a very large health system in Florida where they're looking at deploying RTLS across 3.2 million square feet and 20 buildings. And they had previously had a, um, um, a less precise first generation Wi-Fi locating system for assets. And their decision from supply chain and clinical engineering is, we want it enterprise wide, no blind spots, and we want it down to 12 inches. So they had lived through a decade of less than precise locating, but still served a purpose for many of the use cases to wanting to solve a much broader use case that can then also empower clinical leadership to be able to have access and visibility to where key assets and devices are during the care process. So you need to ask yourself those questions. Are we enterprise wide? Do we have locating technology in every corner of the square footage of the facility or buildings that we manage and serve? Um, and then what is it used for? How precise is it? Is it large zone, which again, as I referred to earlier, first generation Wi-Fi, um, BLE um, can do large zone, which is anywhere between 10 and, and 30 feet of accuracy, has lowest cost, obviously, but lowest accuracy. Medium zone sort of blends it in and still has some bleed through, but not as bad. And then precise locating is when you get into the infrared and the ultrasound and the ultra wideband type locating, then you're getting down to precision locating. And then which enterprise systems use RTLS today? So part of your journey is to say, are we using it for nurse call? Are we using it for our EHR, EMR? Are we using it for our capacity management solution? Are we tracking assets with it? What else can I use it for? If I And what did we learn by using it with the specific enterprise systems we have today? Um, I can guarantee you that virtually every hospital and health system has some mix of those 10 or 11 applications. Obviously, some they have to have the EMR, the nurse call system. Um, but beyond that, it, all, it, 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 it drops off and it just depends what your mix and where you're starting as an organization and your stack of investments your organization has made into those software packages as to where you probably use RTLS today and where you might want to take it in the future. The last part, and this is this is critical. The, the RTLS, RTLS industry is changing rapidly. And there are use cases, very valuable use cases for zone locating, for precise locating. Both can exist together 
in a single environment, but you need a good technology partner to help guide you through this. We happen to have the opportunity at Sonator to be working with a large top three global consulting firm that's doing significant work both in healthcare and in industry today. And they're helping guide those companies, those IDNs through their transformation and finding enabling technologies like RTLS. So whether it's a technology consulting firm, whether it's your RTLS partner, if you trust them um, to do some of the work and advise you, at Sonator, we are, we are independent. Um, while we have our own list of organizations that we've worked with previously from an application perspective, we will work with any enterprise application that your organization uses today. And so you need somebody that really understands the technology of radio versus Wi-Fi versus ultrasound versus BLE versus, and I'm just intermingling, those are obviously a number, those are radio and some are others and ultra wideband, et cetera. What does it all really mean? It can get very confusing if you don't live in the RTLS segment every day. So you need a trusted technology partner. Sometimes we've seen customers lean on their EMR partner or their nurse call partner to help them at develop a long-term plan for RTLS. The ABCs, so if I, can, if I can give you something memorable that you take with you to your next meeting when RTLS may be a part of it, the first thing that I always say in the A is align. So every health system that I've ever worked with or my commercial organizations that I've led work with, have clinical and operational objectives. And it's always a different journey at every hospital and many times the hospital within the regions within the IDNs. And the objectives oftentimes are based on competitive pressures in the marketplace, insurance plan changes, physician practice changes, things that don't necessarily immediately and directly impact care, but they influence the overall strategy. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is do you have a list of things that you think are aligned um, on your clinical and operational objectives to use cases that RTLS addresses. And if there are, let's say you want to improve your asset management, then that's a place to start. And that's, I think, important to help you get along your way. So make sure you're not just grabbing RTLS because people are talking about it. Grab it for specific and tie it specifically back to your clinical or operational objectives. Second is there are some very high value uh, objectives within the stack that I talked about. They're all very important to a department head that may be over infection control versus a clinical biomedical engineer leader or that's responsible for asset management versus a chief nursing officer who's responsible for utilizing nurse call all the time to respond to patients' needs. That being said, in every organization I've ever worked with, they always have a top two or three initiatives they're working on for that specific year. Pick one of those, look through the lens of how can location and proximity improve that objective and what enterprise applications support that objective today and then connect the dots between the two. The last is, and this is really important, is when you connect that enterprise system to your RTLS desired capabilities, whether that's a relatively low cost BLE solution um, or a much more expensive high end, but down to 12 inch type locating or even one inch with ultra wideband, what's the purpose? Many times when we go into accounts, we hear, well, we bought this technology to be used with this enterprise application, but it doesn't work because the RTLS wasn't as accurate as we needed to be. So people stopped using it. That's the one thing we want to avoid. And it is actually very avoidable. Your trusted technology partner, whomever is helping guide you through force ranking, stacking, uh, prioritizing and executing a plan to tie RTLS to all the other software applications you have in house today can help you ensure that you don't miss the target by putting in too high of accuracy when you didn't need it, and so you just drove costs into the equation, 
or too low of an accuracy and nobody uses it, which is you just wasted capital on both that software and or the hardware to achieve the result. At Sonator, we're more than happy to help in that perspective of technology mapping and planning. We obviously have experience deploying across all those various use cases and there's hundreds of them. And uh, we welcome the opportunity to, to talk with you about that. So this is one that brings it home. This is actually the last slide of the presentation before we open it up for questions. And I like to do this because the road has already been paved by some visionary hospitals and health systems that have embraced RTLS across multiple enterprise applications. So anyone that's listening on this phone wondering if they're still on the, the early adoption phase of RTLS, we are not. We're starting to get into the mainstream phase of this technology life cycle, which will probably go on for another 25 to 30 years before it's really just running in the background like Cisco or Aruba does on your hospital networks. So 30 years ago, very few things were connected to your hospital network. Today, virtually everything is. We have that same vision for RTLS and it will run in the background. It will not be something that is you know, obvious anymore but it will have taken away hopefully hundreds of steps in your workflows, thus making your labor more effective, thus helping you really address the challenge ahead related to increased patient populations and decreased skilled labor access. So this hospital is a 305 bed community hospital located in the Northeast. Um, it's a, there's nothing, when I say there's nothing unique, it's a large, multi-billion dollar enterprise, so it's unique, but there's nothing unique related to, is it a large, massive academic medical center with a tremendous foundation that can pay for any technology they want? No, this is a very uh, common, um, typical type of hospital, level two trauma center. Its operating margins or net income margins are no greater. They're right at the industry average of 2.9, but they decided to make a serious investment and create a roadmap for multiple uses of RTLS going forward. And so that's why I wanna share it with you today because the ROI that they achieved by first using it in the very beginning in 2016 is not why they expand it today. And they have a number of initiatives over the next couple of years to continue to use RTLS with other applications that they're updating over time. It's a um, well-decorated hospital. So when you think about how does your organization compete going forward for skilled labor, whether it's in the clinical engineering, supply chain, nursing, nursing assistant area, creating effective, efficient, safe work environments does pay dividends in the labor constrained market of today. This hospital, I'm not saying it's just because of RTLS, they've done a lot of other things. They invested in Magnet, right? They've invested in trying to be a destination where people want to go to work if they're in the healthcare industry and live in the Northeast. And so they won a number of awards that I think reflect upon their ability to invest in things like RTLS and other enterprise applications to create a great work environment and to deliver quality of care for their patients in their community. The enterprise deployment of RTLS started in 2016 um, and it has expanded over time to cover patients, staff and assets. And so what does that mean? That means that patients wear a RTLS wristband when they're admitted to the hospital so they can be tracked through their, what I referred to earlier, hundreds of date and time stamps that go on with the patient's progress through their care pathway um, in the hospital during their length of stay here is average is 4.58 days. So again, very typical of a acute care hospital. The staff wear tags so that their work can be documented and so that they can be most used effectively during the care process during the day. This hospital also happens to have significant physical blind spots because of the length of the hallways and the curvature of the hallways, which never get taken into consideration 
that I've seen when designing hospitals, because you're designing them for aesthetics, but when it comes back to workflows, we physically make the environments more difficult for hospital staff many times just by the way we design the space. And so RTLS helps eliminate some of those blind spots when you can't see where that staff member is, that patient is, that asset is. And then also tagging assets, knowing them down to room level accuracy. That infusion pump is in that room, those three infusion pumps, that SCD pump, that hospital bed, you know, and on and on. Lastly, when you think about the things that consume RTLS data, location, proximity of patients, staff, and assets. You start at the top, roll in nurse call. Very basic, meaning nurse call can leverage locating probably as much as teletracking, which is their capacity management tool. And there's a number of other nurse call providers out there, Hillrom, Westcom, et cetera. There's a number of competitors at teletracking, including the major EMRs. Get Well Networks, that's one of those patient experience applications that when a staff member walks into the room, their profile is presented to the patient on whatever type of TV or screen that is in the room. It helps them coordinate their itinerary for the patient's stay in a way that gives the patient and family confidence that there is a pathway to healing and uh, ultimately leaving the hospital. Care site analytics. Um, does deep analytics over across all the data that comes in from systems like Rolland and teletracking and get well to create what I would call a more thorough um, predictive model related to patient experience and care. Hygistics is an infection control application. It can be used with or without RTLS. Um, this hospital is planning on deploying it with RTLS this year to automate their compliance reporting that they already do related to hand hygiene. And they look forward to, they're making a decision on their next generation uh, electronic health record. Once that decision is made, then they're gonna decide on where they would like to hook in um, RTLS for various workflows related to documentation, patient care pathways, et cetera. All right. That concludes the uh, presentation, Linda, if we wanna okay. open it up for questioning. Okie dokie, right, we have a few questions, Matt. The first one is, um, how do we prioritize which technologies should use RTLS to improve the effectiveness of our work as clinical and engineering staff? Yeah, you know, I would look first into, it. it if your perspective, if you're a clinician, think about the applications you use and think about when a person or an asset's location or proximity information would be valuable. Um, so whether that's in your electronic medical record, whether that's in your nurse call system, we have a number of use cases that we can review with anybody that's interested to go through and one, understand who do you use today from an enterprise application perspective, and then what data would, would benefit from having more accurate location and proximity information, and how would that take a burden off that individual employee on their role type, and how would it potentially impact other role types in the organization? And I'll give a brief example. Um, teletracking has a function, as do some other applications, called auto-discharge. It's a cascading effect where when a patient receives a discharge order in teletracking and the patient has a RTLS patient tag on it and the hospital staff has a staff tag on it, you can see the staff and the patient progressing through physically the hospital to an exit. Now that staff member can be a nurse, that staff member could be transport, that staff member could be anybody that's tagged. But what we're looking for is the ability to then notify EVS that it's time to clean the room and turn the room over. So when I say the cascading effect, one date time element of location, the patient combined with another, the staff member, moving a patient out of a room and staying out of that room for a period of time and knowing through the EHR that there was a discharge order already approved and written by the physician, now has the opportunity to automatically notify that that room is ready for cleaning and turnover. And you can reduce wait times on rooms from what teletracking will tell you is 15 hours 
down to 30 minutes, which is a huge value proposition with limited staff. On the clinical engineering side, um, I will add this question because I think it's, or this statement, clinical engineering has one of the toughest jobs in the hospital trying to maintain the massive medical device fleets that are there today. So in a 200 bed hospital, they're probably managing somewhere around 6,000 medical devices that have an average purchase price of $15,000. So they're not inexpensive. Most of those are mobile, not all of them, but finding those, managing those, repairing those, getting those back up on the floors, there is tremendous value add by knowing the location, the, 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 the patterns, the if you've lost it, you're not searching for it endlessly. Um, there's a lot of value there for clinical engineering to focus on what they are hired to do, which is make sure the equipment is always in good working order, safe to use and ready and available. Okay, well, another question that came in is, what has prevented more hospitals from using RTLS as part of their tools to improve the work environment for their employees? So I, I think that there's really been two issues in my 20 years of being in this space. The first is the first generation locating didn't work that well, but the promise was there. And so a lot of organizations did invest in less accurate locating technologies and try to use them for precise locating purposes. And they were disappointed in the results. And one thing I've learned in hospitals is the priority in hospitals is always to serve the patient. And if a system that isn't working as you expect it to do, um, they tend to push it to the side and not use it. So I think the first thing that prevents people from getting over the hump is many executives that have been in healthcare for many years may have had a bad experience with RTLS. The second, and I think this is probably the most important for today, meaning the next few years in healthcare, is the cost. It's not inexpensive to deploy. That's why there's numerous different aspects of locating from zone level all the way up to precision level. That being said, we at Sonator, we're committed to actually lowering the cost, not raising the cost in the, in the coming years by applying new technologies that are less expensive than the ones that created the industry over the last 20 years. So you can expect from us an actual lowering of your cost per square foot um, of your enterprise, substantial lowering. I'm not even saying a little bit, 5% or 10%, I'm talking substantial, because technology has evolved. And so there's less expensive technologies that can deliver that same type of solution. And those are the ones we plan to bring to market um, in 2023 and beyond. Okay, and just actually following on from that, I've just had a question come and say, what is a model barometer for understanding pricing of an RTLS solution? Is it like cost per bed or cost per square foot? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's sort of um, the wild, wild west right now. I think you can find you know, vendors pricing it lots of different, different ways. Um, I will give you my own personal experience that I think the easiest way, if you're in a, if you're an individual facility, then quoting it per room or per square foot is an easy way for, for executives to understand how coverage works. Every room will be covered down to 12 inches, or these assets will be tracked at a zone level and these assets will be tracked at a precision level because they need to be tracked and known where they are so you can find them immediately as a clinical staff or a clinical engineering staff. Um, we're, you know, we've priced it both ways. We've priced it on a per room model. We've priced it based on drawings. Ultimately, still in RTLS today for everybody that's listening is that you still have to have drawings in the end because you have to be able to tell the installers where to put the equipment so that the locating system is working to its specifications. That being said, you can definitely, you should be thinking about a per room cost is probably the easiest way for most organizations. And I'll give you a range here real quick. If you're thinking about true zonal, you should expect $250 per room for a zonal type tracking system, which is primarily applicable for assets and maybe a few patient locating, but definitely not staff for all the reasons we talked about staff safety and knowing where they are in case of an urgent situation. The high end 
which is precision, which says we want to track all things, can go into the $2,000 range at current system pricing. Um, we're hoping to bring that to market far lower than $2,000 in the coming years. And so you see this broad range based on use cases, um, and there'll be something in the middle that probably blends BLE for when you only need zonal and precision when you need that room level accuracy. Um, but watch for prices to drop, at least from Sonator, maybe not others. There is a tremendous challenge and pressure in supply chain today, as there is with all technology-based companies that use microprocessors. Um, we're not immune to it at Sonator, but we've also planned fairly well with our supply chain. Okay, that's great. So, so which applications that use RTLS benefit the nurse or clinical engineer the most? Good question. So on the, the one that I advise to from a nursing perspective, nurse call first and foremost. And there, the reason is there are so many workflows tied to a call system that ties the patient to the caregiver in that interaction. And the usefulness of that system with RTLS can definitely improve the patient experience, improve the effectiveness of that nurse impacting that care and keeping the patient safe. I just find, and nurse call is everywhere. So it has to be by code in every room of every hospital. So it's one of those few enterprise applications that has to exist. Um, and most modern platforms, so when we're talking Hillrom, Rawland, Westcom, um, they all are um, IP-based systems today. So they have the ability to work both on-premise and in the cloud. And I think there's a lot of data that can be used there to help nurses drive a better experience drive a better work environment for themselves and their, their, their peers over time. The one that I think benefits clinical engineering and nursing the most would be tying RTLS to some type of asset management tracking system, along with the processes and procedures to improve utilization. Over the years, and I had the opportunity to lead uh, a, a asset management program that had 60 hospitals. Uh, underneath it in tens of thousands of assets. And the amount of time hospital staff, whether it's the clinical engineer, the biomed technician, the nurse, the nurse assistant, the physician at times, spent looking for these expensive critical devices is astronomical and a tremendous non-value add. And if you do build the asset management programs right based on RTLS, a tremendous amount of trust comes into the actual workflow and processes between those two organizations. And they begin to stop focusing on the challenges of, I don't have the right equipment at the right time, to how do we make sure that all the right equipment is there when you need it? And if not, it's an exception and we get it to you immediately so you can serve your patient faster. That's really the, the most critical. Now there's, like I said, there's, there's 10 other systems there that also dramatically benefit, but these are the ones I think that benefit the clinician and the and the clinical engineering organization the most. Okay, that's great, Matt. We're actually coming up to an hour. So I just want to thank you, Matt, for your time today and for a really great and informative presentation. Um, I'd like to encourage everybody that's listening today to visit today's sponsor, Sonitor, to learn more about the products that they provide to our industry. So please visit sonitor.com. As promised, the answer to today's trivia question is PJ Barnum. So congratulations to our winner, Kelvin Knight. So enjoy your T-shirt. A quick reminder, you can attain your CE certificate by completing the post-webinar survey, which will be emailed one hour after the completion of today's webinar. You must complete the survey to receive your one CE credit from the ACI, and you'll be able to download the certificate directly from your computer once the survey is submitted. If you have any questions, uh, you can reach us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. We'll be back next week with another webinar, so visit webinarwednesday.live for more details and complimentary registration. Thanks again for your time today. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and see you next time. Thank you.